The program is still this morning on ITV and we are on the next uh, discussion segment. Uh, on this segment, we shall be discussing humanitarian issues in Nigeria. Tomorrow is World Humanitarian mm -hmm. Day and we know that Nigeria mm -hmm. has been struggling with so much in terms of a uh, humanitarian crisis because of insurgency. Uh, we had it, the insurgency started in 2009. It became worse and, and it's becoming worse. The Northeast is the worst hit of all these crises. Not only the Northeast, even the Northwest, everywhere in the country there is one humanitarian crisis or the other. Banditry is taking place, kidnapping is taking place. We have internally displaced persons in almost every state in this country. How are we dealing with all of this, even as the world is remembering this special uh, kind of people and this special guest show tomorrow? To discuss this matter with me is uh, Abubakar Kendi. He is the Secretary General and CEO of the Nigerian Red Cross. We all know what Red Cross is all about. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, talking about a humanitarian crisis, I would like to ask, how bad is the situation in Nigeria? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Charity, for having me this day. As you rightly mentioned, today is, I mean, uh, the world humanitarian is back tomorrow, 19th of August, uh, 2022, and it is a uh, theme as uh, uh, it, it takes a village. I mean, what it's time to say is that it takes a village really to assist people on the humanitarian crisis. And as you uh, rightly uh, kind of observe, uh, Nigeria is in a big uh, crisis situation. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, over 9 million people already affected by the crisis. I mean, if you talk about even northeastern Nigeria alone, uh, we have quite a number of uh, people, I mean, uh, millions, and the situation has uh, become protracted. You know, it has been prolonged, and uh, we really have no idea when this crisis will go down. I mean, it is, it is a very big uh, challenge for, for not only Nigeria, but for the world over. And uh, the World Humanitarian Day is actually uh, designed to recognize or to appreciate uh, the volunteers, the professionals, and even the people affected by this humanitarian crisis. So uh, it is actually uh, titled, I said, it says a village, meaning that we require many people to support this. Uh, it's a queer professional's press. You are there to help to promote uh, mobilization of resources for people affected. A, a teacher to train people, train children who are affected. Um, uh, um, the health workers are there also to provide support for those in need. Uh, the advocates, the mobilizers, the, the counselors. I mean, it takes a, a community and in their community to assist Nigerians that are affected by this uh, crisis in Northern Nigeria. And uh, this is also being compounded by, by hunger crisis. You know, we have hunger crisis initially, uh, I mean, across, I mean, North East, but also North West and the North Central. But it, it has been accelerated now. As at last year, August, we have uh, just about seven states that were critical. But today, we have 20 whole states in Nigeria that are affected. Okay, that is to say, it's almost getting to the 36 states yes, of the yes, country when it comes yes, to this. Yes, yes, yes. So, so the situation is really very, very critical. and. Uh, uh, we need all and sundry to support in alleviating the situation of these people. Well, we know that this situation actually uh, brought about the internally displaced uh, persons, internally displaced camps. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, when you go out, even in, uh, in, the, in the FCT here, we, like, we, will, we will have quite yes. uh, a number of uh, IDPs. Yes. Uh, can you give maybe an estimate of how many IDPs do we have uh, across the country and how has it been? Uh, Aid, uh, aiding these people with relief materials or whatever help that uh, you, could, you people can give to them? Yeah. Well, um, according to the you know, UN Organization for Coordination of Nigeria, that's uh, Northeast alone actually has about 2.2 uh, million people that are IDPs okay. in Northeastern part of Nigeria alone. Uh, I mean, uh, that has been caused, I mean, you mentioned clearly, including Abuja, if you go to suburb in Abuja, you see them very, very clearly. If you pass up, you see the big uh, villages and communities that are meant for, for IDPs. So uh, we'll see in, in total there are about 5 million, uh, I mean 4.2 million Nigerians that are internally displaced. But you know, this is also even worse communities that is hosting them because they tend to uh, kind of uh, stress the, the, side, the, the, uh, the utilities in those communities. So the host communities are also greatly in need of uh, support uh, for, 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 for their livelihoods. And uh, 
uh, I mean, a little survey, I mean, a survey that was conducted shows clearly that uh, uh, what people need basically is food. There's serious food crisis. I mean, 93 percent need food. Then closely by food, they will also need people that need uh, some cash assistance. But in some places, even when you give people cash, they cannot even assess uh, uh, the goods to buy because of the uh, compound situation. Conflict and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, insurgency has really uh, compounded this issue. So assisting uh, abandoned people to a real assistance is very difficult. It's very a big challenge in Nigeria because of this conflict and, uh, and also the, the, the insurgency. So, so you realize that apart from the, uh, I mean, the, the armed groups, there are also, uh, I mean, uh, banditry happening across Nigeria. I mean, insecurity is, is a big challenge. In many places, even taking goods to places, I mean, in, 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 in North East in particular, uh, particularly in Borno, we have to use helicopters to assess communities. We have to engage helicopters to go to from place to place. Okay, meaning that the roads are not even accessible. They are not. They are not you cannot. Is it that bad roads or due to security, security, security situation? It's, 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 and this is even going now beyond North East. So that is to say you have to be alive to help someone. Yes, yes. So, so this is the situation. So, and that's why the, the humanitarian world clearly need uh, a lot of uh, commendation and appreciation for the work they are doing. I mean, uh, like I mentioned, you know, it is all professionals are engaged in doing this. And uh, uh, this situation that we are having in Nigeria, we really don't know. We don't know where it is going to, to be abated. We don't know where it is going to end. Wow. So, so, so uh, I mean, like I said, I mean, apart from, I mean, also in the North is uh, government has uh, tried to resettle people. But you go also to the resettlement and see what is there. What are the facilities? Even after the resettlement, uh, people are still being attacked again. And the people knows is even even I mean in, in the in the north and northwestern Nigeria, the state like Zamfara, Kasina, uh, Sokoto, uh, Niger, I mean Kebi, Kaduna, you know. So so the situation is really becoming uh, very very critical for for Nigerians, and we are uh, of the hope that uh, with all efforts, I mean government is making all efforts, and uh, uh, the international organisations are making all efforts. We as the Red Cross, being enacted by Act of Parliament in this case. Uh, with the mandate to augment, to complement the government in the maternity assistance. You know, we're also doing all the, 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 the best to see that people get this assistance. And uh, we are being supported by our movement partners, the International Committee of Red Cross and the International Federation of Red Cross and Societies to really alleviate the suffering of uh, vulnerable people. All right, when you say that government is doing, is, is doing all efforts to help out, to intervene, people are watching. Nigerians will be wondering, if government is doing so much, as you say, why does this thing keep increasing? Because you just mentioned that we, have, we are looking at about 9 million people in this country yes. in this condition. Yes. So why does the number keep increasing? Well, like I said, in fact, even the, the, the hunger crisis, which confirmed the situation, we have up to 19.4 million people now that need immediate emergency. 19.4 19 million in Nigeria, yes. Million. I mean, the, the 8 million of people also that we saw is just about the North East. That's just in the North East. The East yes. Oh. But this uh, hunger crisis, which is also a global phenomenon, is not really limited to Nigeria. I remember the COVID-19 has caused a lot of uh, people, uh, I mean, it has uh, incapacitated many people with inability really to assess uh, livelihood. So also the Ukraine crisis have also compounded this issue. And another challenge that we also have is that uh, many donors sometimes tend to come, I mean, come, I mean, compound, I mean, insist on supporting only one area. I mean, majority of the donors in Nigeria today are talking about North East. I mean, the uh, Borno, Adamawa, and UB State in particular. But uh, the challenge of uh, humanitarian assistance is far beyond this this region. And then you also look at. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, w w what is happening? I mean, with the with the Ukraine also issue. When Ukraine also came on board, I mean, the challenges the war came. Many people, many donors again tend to divert resources again to that area, to, to Ukraine. I mean, uh, living uh, clearly the, the challenge that we're already having here. And like I said uh, previously, the issue of banditry, the issue of ethno-religious crisis in Nigeria. Is making the situation difficult. So what I'm trying to say is that, despite the effort government is putting, this uh, main compounding challenge is the insecurity issue. Government is trying it best to, to check this insecurity, but you know it really confounds the situation. Farmers cannot even go to farm 
as regularly as uh, being planned. That is another know. issue. Yes. That's another story for another day. Yes. I mean, for us humanitarian workers, assessing people is even a challenge. Assessing people who are endearing it. Even when those people have been taken in captivity, how do we assess them? How do we reach them? It is a big challenge for us. Uh, we need to have negotiators to be able to, to, uh, to uh, uh, provide access to these people. We need to have protection also, especially for, for gender. Women and girl child today, they are exposed to a lot of uh, what you call gender-based violence, those that are affected. So precisely the, the government is doing its best, but I must uh, recognize the fact that uh, uh, challenges concerning insecurity and continuous uh, ethno-religious uh, crisis are not uh, government, uh, I mean, uh, uh, responsibility. I mean, they, they are our own responsibilities as general citizens in Nigeria, and we need to support the government to see how we can really address these issues. Okay, you go out to meet these people. Uh, talking about the IDPs, the internally displaced uh, persons, and you interact with them. Yeah. So when you interact with them, aside from the fact that, okay, you say some of them have been resettled yeah. in, uh, in, in, in the Northeast. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, we still have some of them in camps yeah. that do not even have, they have not been resettled. Yeah. When you interact with them, what, does, uh, what is their body language like? Well, uh, the truth is that uh, people are being uh, seriously uh, kind of... Uh, in critical conditions. I mean, their mental health has been affected, some of them, and, uh, and uh, I mean, you can see clearly, uh, I mean, in their faces, the, the, the need for, I mean, impoverishment is, is very high there. Yeah? Poverty is very high. I mean, uh, like I said, when we ask about what are the basic things they need, most of them, they need food. They, they don't have secured food. There is no assurance of their daily needs. Distance comes intermittently, and uh, like you clearly, uh, notice, I mean, even carrying food to these people is also difficult because of the insecurity issues, you know, uh, banditry issues. They are also not allowing this. And then where, where they are also in, in IDP camps, I mean, secured maybe by, by military, the issue of having uh, access to basic livelihood is also difficult. So, so, I mean, we talk about education. How many children are there actually that are, are having no access to, to education again? So this is a very critical issue that we have. And uh, the, the mental and social well-being affects uh, the, the man's ability, really, to, to nurture, I mean, to, to, to live uh, successfully and happily. So you'll see clearly in the, the, the dire need of these uh, people. They all need uh, uh, food. They need uh, basic health. I mean, mm -hmm. we even have uh, outbreaks of uh, epidemics, uh, cholera in particular, I mean, in, in quite a number of IDP camps. And uh, this also leads to so many mortality uh, within the, the camps. So precisely, uh, uh, I mean, we, we have a serious challenge in Nigeria, and the humanitarian uh, I mean, organizations are all out to see how this can be supported. The resources are meager, and they are also declining because of all the challenges across the globe. Being that uh, this thing has been ongoing, and uh, these uh, people, they stay in these camps for so long, uh, is, uh, is, are there provisions for uh, schools in, the school, in, in these uh, camps, especially for children? Well, there, there, there are temporary spaces that are, which we call safe space. The safe space are intended to cover for especially women and children, and then where they have been given uh, kind what of... What about the men? What about the boy <laughs> child? Because, you know, whenever... I am a woman. Yes, I understand yes, that uh, yes. the, uh, women are the weaker vessels, yes. as they say. Yes. But uh, with what is going on in the world now, it is very important that the boy child, too, should yes. be taken into consideration when we are talking about the... No, no, uh, the, the, clearly, the girl child. clearly, we are just talking about the vulnerability issue here, mm -hmm. where we give emphasis to those who are most vulnerable. So but the boy child is not <laughs> vulnerable, are you saying? <laughs> well, like so. I told you, they are subjected to gender-based violence. I mean, I mean, no matter the age. So that's why we need, we need to really take uh, right. action to see that we are able to protect them. So protection is really required for this uh, category of group. And uh, we need to do, make every effort to see that even in the process of providing education for them, they are highly protected. So, I mean, also for the boys, they are also not left out. Like we see, uh, I mean, along after Apo in Abuja, there you see there are camps there, but there are also uh, some small spaces that have been uh, provided to educate uh, the, the, the children. Uh, I mean, at least basic education has been provided for them. We have other uh, donors that also provide books and other basic school amenities for them. So, I mean, there is uh, some level of encouragement, but I must tell you the resources are dwindling. There is a lot of uh, demand, and uh, we do not have resources. So I want to uh, use this opportunity, actually, to uh, invite, I mean, uh, appeal for our fellow Nigerians to provide support to these people. I mean, 19.4 million people is not a small figure. 
that need humanitarian assistance, immediate humanitarian assistance in Nigeria today. And it doesn't look as if this number is going to reduce in any uh, any time soon. I mean, in, in 2021, I mean, August, as I mentioned before, the apart from the nose is crisis, the, there were mainly seven states that were really in acute uh, food shortage. But uh, today, today, I mean, as at February this year, this has reached uh, 21 states. So it shows clearly, I mean, it might have gone, I mean, I'm talking about February, so we're already in August, so situation will have actually exacerbated in most states. So there is really a need for uh, a kind of uh, uh, food security in Nigeria. Well, uh, I must say that the Red Cross is doing a lot, and uh, you people are trying when it comes to humanitarian uh, aid, uh, giving out to people there and everything. Uh, you talk about inability to access roads to go there because of security challenges. Sometimes you have to use uh, helicopters to get there. That is, uh, you have to be safe for you to be able to render help to someone. Apart from all this, are there other challenges that you people face in the course of discharging your uh, duties? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Precisely, uh, I mean, we have teaming volunteers. Nigeria Society today has uh, over 800,000 volunteers across Nigeria, and they are based in their communities. So anytime any situation happens, there are people to help, always. Anytime there's any crisis, there are people within the community to help. I mean, uh, I mean, in addition to the global support that we have, but like I said, the resources in assisting vulnerable people in Nigeria are very, are very, very minimal. And we need really people, we need philanthropists, well to do, individuals, group, corporate organization to support the cause of fellow Nigerians. I give you an example of what happened during the bomb blast in 2002 in Lagos. We had a lot of response. Many Nigerians provided even water sachet. Some individuals even provided. So, so, so that uh, uh, situation actually is, is going down now. We are not getting people really coming now. So we need people to really assist. People also need to appreciate the effort of governments. Many a times we condemn people, especially a public servants, saying they are not doing that. I mean, it's not the best thing to do for Nigeria. It's to appreciate that effort and commend them. In fact, sometimes we even say we pray for people mm -hmm. so we're able to alleviate. The situation in Nigeria is really actually affecting everybody. I mean, there's no uh, family today that do not have any link to this crisis. I'm talking of the hunger crisis, but also the issue we have in North East, the issue of banditry, the farmers haters clashes, the ethno-religious conflicts that are happening across Nigeria. I mean, even, I mean, you go to the North, I mean, the Southeastern Nigeria, where even some days are declared uh, uh, people cannot go to work. I mean, all this is really causing a lot of challenge for Nigerians. It minimizes the day, the time our people need to go for their livelihood. So we need to really appreciate that we need to work, work together as Nigerians, and we need to support each other. So we really want to appeal to people to come to the aid of those who are affected. We have 37 branches. We have a branch in every state. We have a division in every local government, 774. And there are there people who are willing to volunteer, to sacrifice their life, to support uh, uh, people that actually need help. So we're appealing for that support and cooperation. I want to thank also the media for giving us this opportunity also to really, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, advocate for, for people's support to vulnerable Nigerians. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Nigerians, you, you heard it from uh, Red Cross, from uh, Abu Bakar Kendi, the Secretary General of the Nigerian Red Cross. Uh, they are actually looking for more Nigerians, well, many Nigerians, uh, to come out and render help. Nigeria is dealing with so much humanitarian crisis. We are talking about over 19 million people who actually are in need of immediate urgent humanitarian aid as we speak now. So if you're out there, you're watching this and you're listening tomorrow is the day to mark this day. Anywhere you find yourself and there's any way you can help out, please do. You must not be very wealthy, right? To yes. do that. Yeah. So with, the, with, 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 with your widow's might, yeah. you can actually help. Yeah. Thank you very much for being part of the program. Thank you very much for being Well, I will take a short break and when we return, TMI continues. Please don't go away.